I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I think the rest He's of these knuckleheads will be here momentarily. <laughs> Kyle's it. There he is. Good morning. Good morning. Kyle can always be counted to be on time. Emily works on lead singer time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how that goes. <laughs> I am a little <laughs> familiar with that one. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe me, I know how that one goes. <laughs> uh, Tim, where are you exactly? Um, I'm out of Ventura. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you're just on down the road. Yeah, yeah, we are. Just down the road. Um, Ventura County, out of, you know. Where just, at? Um, it's probably like 40 minutes past Hollywood. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I'm in Oak Park. I'm in Ventura County. Yeah, I mean, I'm, oh. I'm in Sherman Oaks. So, like, oh, no we, we know. I went to college at UCSB, so we got to know what, what's up with Ventura. Um, well, we, we're off, we have an office off the avenue. Um, yeah. We also have an office in Santa Paula. And um, we do the podcast out of Oxnard. Got it. So. Is, the Bro is the Brophy Brothers in Oxnard still open right now? I think they are, yes, outside, outside okay. dining only. I may actually need to go there on Wednesday just because <laughs> I, I want some Chipino, so what the hell. Yeah, it's, um, we're, try we're trying to put together something for everything opening up. Um, hi. Uh, we do the Ventura County Music Awards, we, um, our, our organization. And so we're trying to do something with, um, having them all open uh, or as soon as everything opens to do it all downtown Ventura on the, on the street. Yeah. I mean, it's, I guess at some point Ventura theater, that's still going, right? No, no. I work with them too. Um, they are, they were opened and then it, it's such a liberal town that they don't, they're not taking no chance chances. Well, I mean, they're not like closed permanently. They've just decided that they're not going to mess around right now, or are they going to lose their lease and and you know not be able to come back? Well, they own it, but I'm not sure. The financials right now are mm. pretty bad. That's a bummer. I always liked that venue. Yeah, but, I, saw, I saw Pearl Jam there in '91. No shit. Yeah, <laughs> with a band called Tribe After Tribe from South Af Africa that opened. Dude, it was like how many people does that place hold? Like fifteen hundred, two thousand. Yeah, that many. What is this venue? Ventura Theater. Fifteen hundred or two thousand. Yeah, yeah. That was if if it does go down, I'm gonna put together a crew. We'll we'll purchase it. We're not gonna let it die. <laughs> Such a great space, and that's just like the kind of the in between between Santa Barbara, which you know, there's only so many places to play there outside of the Bowl. You know, State Street's not really what it was. Right. Um, and. I mean, going to college there and, and just all the shows that I used to go to up there and kind of up and down the coast, it'd be a bummer to lose that one. Yeah, no, we won't. I promise. I'll do whatever it takes on my power to keep it going. Well, good. I'm glad we got that situated. <laughs> <laughs> Single-handedly saving music one venue at a time. <laughs> it's just, it, it, that venue means a lot, you know? It's it, it, to my childhood, especially. Um, the first time I ever got to meet a, a musician was there, or um, a first concert was there. It, it was it's definitely the first for a lot of, you know, things I've done or been a part of. So yeah, I've been, I've been to shows there. I don't know that I have I ever played there to be honest. Although there are years of my life that are a little bit hazy at best. So it's entirely <laughs> possible that I was in residency there for six months and I just don't remember it. Um, but I, I, I definitely remember going to shows there and, you know, obviously like the, God, what was the, the, was the Earl Warren showgrounds in Santa Barbara? Mm -hmm. Um, fucking playing that dust bowl rodeo shit kicker venue with, with a bunch of people and, there was there was all kinds of cool shows that would that would come. There was good promoters, you know, back in the '90s who were getting bands in there. Um, back in my heyday. <laughs> is it true that the dressing room area is like haunted? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you go to our um, YouTube account, we, we did a, uh, an investigation of it. Did you? Yeah. I want to see that. I've, I've heard, I've heard <laughs> those rumors. That's cool. There, there's, um, there, the whole venue's haunted. Like oh, really? up, upstairs, you, I, I've witnessed, I try to be as skeptical as I can, but I can't, I saw a girl inside of the man's bathroom in a dress. I left, I was waiting for her to come out. She never came out. So I looked in, she was gone. That's so fucking rad. <laughs> I mean, it's we, right up your alley, Kyle. <laughs> we, we throw um, local shows at the theater. So before the theater um, opens up completely, we we're in there just filming things. We are, you know, just being guys doing dumb shit. And we've seen a lot of crazy things and um, it's fucking nuts. I'm gonna go check out your YouTube channel so I can see the investigative reporting. <laughs> <laughs> I also- I mean, I, j just to play devil's advocate here, I have seen women go into the men's bathroom and never come out, but that's kind of <laughs> so, you know, I don't, I don't want to jump to the paranormal here. <laughs> Rock and roll bathrooms, that's a, that's a thing unto itself, so. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've ever had an interview that I was hoping that, or I ever requested for an interview that I hoped got denied. Um, I heard your, your song, Little Bird, and I wasn't expecting it. And just to be honest, I cried. Like, oh. I, I, like, up until like 1045, I was, I had tears in my eyes. This is my oh. biggest fear in my life is to lose my children like this. Like, I know it's the hundred percent, it's going to happen and there's nothing I can do about it. My kids are 14 and 15. So it's right around the corner and, and my, my boy plays football. So it's, and he's good. It's not like he's a shitty football player. So he's going to go. To <laughs> <laughs> You're wishing his talent to get tapped down a little bit. It's like, what do you go high? Yeah. Oh. Um, um, and it's so, so different from the rest of your music. Uh, the rest of your guys' music, um, it gives me a, M83 feel, feel, sort of like, um, I don't know, uh, I, I think I hear, you know, those uh, Jupiter 8s in the background or uh, a Roland TO, T8808, you know, some of those um, uh, instruments or whatever. But then when I heard this song, <laughs> I mean, there's a lyric in the song, it, you will always have a home. And I fucking lose it. I lost it. Like even right now, I'm like getting misty. Uh -huh. I'm thinking about it. Uh -huh. um, awesome. yeah. What? How did like that's a huge shift from your other music, um, and obviously it comes from a real spot because I feel it. Uh, explain to me the song. Well, um, it kind of just like happened so organically. Like Kyle came up with this sort of like really pretty guitar lick um, and sent it to me. And I just, it's like one of those things where, you know, sometimes songs take forever to figure out and like really dissect. And like, it just kind of like felt like it came to me lyrically. Like it was just kind of this little bird like imagery. And then I was like, what does that mean? And so I kind of like felt like, the feeling that I had when I had to leave the nest and I knew that coming from the side of, you know, a parent's point of view, it was like, as much as we want you to stay here, it's really time for you to go. And it's time for you to like discover who you are. Cause you really, you're not going to, you're not going to find it in your comfort zone. So it just, I, I wanted to like emulate that from the parent's perspective, but also, you know, being on both sides i mean i'm not a parent yet but <laughs> just just understanding that that perspective and then um kind of going from my perspective also being an only child kind of feeling like it was a little scarier for me to like take steps um to be more out on my own in general in life so so yeah it's really nice to hear that you connected to it so much so 
literally a thing I'm, I'm fearing every single day in my life. And I try to maximize my time with those kids, you know, just, uh, I don't, I don't even know how to, there's, there's, this song makes me cry. The, the only other song um, that makes me cry to this extent is a song um, by Flora Cash. I'm not sure if you know who they are. Um, let me see. Um, there's a there's a lyric inside of the song. It says, "I saw the part of you only when you're older. You will see too." And like that's how I feel with my kids. Like they're not gonna realize how much I l the parts I see in them. They're so good until I'm gone. And so I have a, I have a ten year old daughter. So for me. You know, this as a parent, I, I relate to what you're saying because I'm actually watching it happen. And my kid could care less about incubus stuff. That was that doesn't mean anything to her. But now she sits in band practices and watches this and is every day, you know, she's sitting upstairs right now on a Zoom for school. And every day she gets that much closer to to going through that same experience where she's gonna be leaving. And it is a bittersweet thing to to experience as a parent. But Emily's absolutely right. I mean, it's that natural that natural journey. And what's interesting for us is that you know a lot of the music that we've done hasn't been released yet. So people are listening to this, and it might seem like a shift to them because they haven't heard the four songs that we're sitting on that we did before this. <laughs> the, the band's transition into a slightly you know slightly different sound, a little less electronica, a little bit more live you know, live drums, different instrumentations, stuff like that. So it's, I think it's going to take a bunch of people by surprise, just the, the sort of evolution, you know, that they end up hearing in this weird time when you wouldn't, normally you go see a band and you get 10 songs and you get to watch that whole journey. Now it's just like one little snapshot at a time. And it's not always in order, you know? Yeah. Um, when, what, what was, caused or what triggered the the change or the shift in um creation on this project i mean for me i can say i think honestly it, it was just the it was really just the evolution of the three of us working together and kind of discovering who we are as songwriters and producers you know when the project first got started we didn't even think it was going to be a band it was more like you know, maybe we're going to be a songwriting collective and we're just going to write some really cool tunes and kind of produce them up to the point where we could shop them around and, you know, potentially sell them to other artists to then go and, you know, make them their songs. But as we kind of got into the studio and started, you know, demoing these things out, they became basically like public ready. Like they weren't demos, they were very polished. And it was like, you know, the first couple tunes, you know, Way to My Sin, Rebel, um, even Let Me In, like the earlier iteration of it was much more electronic. But as we started like deciding that this was going to be a band and started writing new material, it just felt like that direction just felt more uh, right for us, I would say. So for me, I think when we when we revamped Let Me In, because the original demo or demo or polished mastered version of that was was much more in the line of Way to My Sin and Rebel. And we kind of pivoted that because we had worked on some other material that was more organic. Some of the uh, tunes that Dirk had alluded to, we've, we've been sitting on. And we were just like, we really like that song. Maybe we should go rework that to fit more in line with sort of this more live organic feel. And that to me was kind of like the, 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 the pivot point. So to me, Little Bird um, is right in line with that. And then the next, you know, two, three, four songs you're going to hear, it, it's, you're going to feel that shift, you know, more and more. It, I mean, Little Bird's truly a beautiful song, and I, I don't I don't know how else to explain it. Like, I even me and my wife were sitting there listening to it, and, and like, and she doesn't cry. I'm the crier, you know. I'm the <laughs> sister. So, so I'm like crying. She was it's sad, but it's not crying sad. I, mean, I think just, you're gonna really like the video then, because the yeah. video manages to just connect all the dots on that emotional journey with some stuff that. Oh is, my god! It's gonna, it's gonna hit you in the feels. I'm yeah, I'm ready. I don't know if Tim's ready for the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a few more days, so you know. So, how, explain to me with your um, like, you you have a ten year old, and in, in like now the the countdown is starting, right? You, 
the the count when my kids turned 10 i was like all right it's only a matter of time before they hate me like how do you deal with that that um because it's sort of like a fear that's in the back of my head is that all i mean you mentioned the phrase countdown is that in the back of your head as well i think that And I've, I've said this to other friends of mine when my daughter was younger and I wasn't as concerned about that process and, and that they were in like high school and, and going away to college actually that, you know, the idea is to, is to keep your kids trust and to keep a seat at the table for yourself so that you can at least be part of the discussion that, you know, they're going to do some dumb shit <laughs> and you want them to be able to come to you and feel comfortable just going, I did this. Can we talk about it? and not just have it become no you, you know you're immediately into like the punishment phase because you know at some point my daughter is going to get a, a you know a syllabus on all the stupid things that i did in my life and it's going to be prepared to walk in and be like so you want to have this conversation with me about how i'm acting and you did <laughs> and i can read about it in magazines you did these idiotic things so i i, I think trying to keep a level head and understand that you know the the role of a parent is guidance i can't live their life for them you know she's not necessarily going to become a, a musician and i don't know that i would even encourage her to other than to say like find your passion you know and you know emily said something really poignant i think in the song which is this this is always going to be home you know you you need to go out there into the world and figure this out for yourself and just know that you've got a safe place to come back to and that you're always going to be loved and that's i personally for me think that's the role of a parent is to to be the biggest cheerleader and you know i'm going to push you out of the nest but then i'm you know if you need to come back you come back you know i'm just going to be here to, to to guide you as best as i can and and it's it's your life to live and that is a painful process because I don't think I ever realized what my parents went through when I went out at night, wondering if I was ever going to make it back. <laughs> so, you know, karma is a motherfucker. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I can't um, wait. Yeah. It's, so you're, uh, it's, Kyle, you're in the, like, horror? Or, like, haunted places? Uh, I tend to generally like spooky stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, we do every week, or... Every week in October, our, we go out to um, our magazine. We go out to like different abandoned places. Oh, really? Yeah. So like on the 25th, we're going to Scary Dairy in Camarillo. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, the week after, we're going to uh, an abandoned asylum by um, uh, Bakersfield. Oh, uh, wow. Bakersfield's scary enough, but an uh, asylum over yeah. there. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's funny, man. Like. Uh, I, I actually had left LA when I was 16, uh, didn't want to, but I, I had to move to, to Salt Lake City because uh, my, my dad uh, got a new job out there. And um, anyways, I, one of the jobs I had when I was in high school and then just right after I had graduated was actually working for a scientist. And I used to build electromagnetic meters that they would use on like all the ghost shows to go like, you know, measure like electromagnetic fields because that's what they say spirits sort of emit you know, on this side of the veil. It's always just kind of been around me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely looking forward to your asylum photos. That's cool. Yeah, it should be fun. I didn't know you did that, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my, that was like my second job. Like it was my second, or actually that was my third job, but yeah, it was cool. He was, he was nutty. He was just an interesting dude. He like, he, uh, he was kind of like, you know, like the stories of Einstein, like the smartest guy in the world, but couldn't tie his own shoes. Yeah. yeah. It's like sort of the thing like this guy was like that like i went into his house to, to he didn't he never drove i actually drove him to work one time and he lived with birds but he didn't have his birds in cages he just let them fly around the house and i'm telling you like his house was literally covered in bird shit oh, oh man like, that's kind of not to be unexpected <laughs> when you don't fucking you know cage yeah, you, think, you think he'd wipe it up like i'm telling you the stove like everything in his house was oh, just in bird shit. The kitchen. it was the weird like he was just wait like, does strange. that make you marty mcfly and him doc brown <laughs> kind <Yeah. of. laughs> totally. totally although i don't know if i saw einstein anywhere but, uh, <laughs> it's all making more sense kyle <laughs> 
Yeah, it was an interesting, it was an interesting gig for sure. Are you only in this band to keep your family from disappearing from a photograph? <laughs> <laughs> like, are we gonna have to play Enchantment Under the Sea dance at the Ventura <laughs> Theater so that your family doesn't disappear from a photograph? <laughs> Good idea. Um, Emily, uh, explain, uh, like, how did you, I think it's pretty vague on, on the, on how, like I saw the publicist sent me something and it said that someone swiped right and then all of a sudden you are <laughs> this lead singer. I don't under, I think I understand, but I just want to double check the, the understanding. Just swipe right and you'll be a lead singer. No. Um, so <laughs> we, like I just happened to have Bumble because I was like, you know, sure I'll download this app and then I think I was on it like for two days and I probably left it on there. And then Kyle, I just get this email out of the blue um, from Kyle and he's like, hey, you know, I saw your music online and um, was interested in talking to you about a collaboration. And I was like, okay, that's uh, sure, why not? And so we, <laughs> um, and so we chatted on the phone the next day and you know, he was explaining like things and I, I still had no idea like where he came from. And I was like, how did you find my music? Like, what, what's the connection? He's like, yeah, I saw you on Bumble. And I just kind of uh, researched you and was like, cool. So, <laughs> so it was like literally just like that. And then we got together um, and just Please started like, talking. Yeah, yeah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> But it was never weird. So we, we started like talking music and then, you know, emailing back and forth. And then it was just like immediate bros. So <laughs> I just felt like uh, it was just funny that Bumble can be used for band finding as well. So, Who knew? yeah. That's, that's right. Um, yeah. We, you know, it's, we're in a difficult time in regards to the, um, the virus that's going around. Um, in in the event, if and when it, uh, it you know hopefully goes away or things go back to what we considered normal, or maybe not, are you? What is your guys's plans with your music, like tour wise or? I, I think that you know we want to play live. Um, the more music we write, and the more kind of our palette sort of expanded sonically from this early sort of semi-electronic, you know, M83 thing, like you kind of said, into stuff where there's live drums, there is a horn section, there is, you know, a six piece band, like the scope of it is, is, is much bigger. We wanna, we wanna play it, you know, we think that people would enjoy it. I've got an idea of kind of what it looks like and it's big. <laughs> and by that, I mean like, you know, the, the ability to, to, to transcend a, an intimate show and still put on something that is a spectacle in and of itself. I think a lot of bands struggle to figure out how to take their music and actually present it in a way that's compelling to, a, to somebody who's paying their hard earned money to, to like watch this thing. Because it's really easy to sit in your house and listen to music. It's another thing to be impressed with somebody putting the time, effort and energy into putting on a show. And you know, for me personally, my background has always just been on putting on a show. Like, shit, tickets are expensive. People want, yeah. people want to be entertained. They don't want to see you phoning it in like, yeah, I couldn't be bothered to figure out how to make this interesting for you. So, <laughs> um, oh. you know, eventually I, I think we want to play big shows to lots of people. And I think people will, I think people gravitate towards something that's a little bit special. Like there was a time when you would you would go to a show and it wasn't just a whole bunch of songs just play back to back there was like a journey you know and i don't necessarily mean musical theater but like bands would come through town and they put on a fucking show and a show is not to be confused with hey i'm essentially hitting play on a cd player and just going to give you everything that you've heard before the exact same way that you've heard it it's let me let me take you on a journey and that's the thing that kind of gets us excited, even though we know that that could be a year away. 
you know, realistically. So in the meantime, for us, it's about continuing to write quality songs and, and releasing music and getting people familiar with, with the catalog and the idea of what this band kind of is, because a lot of the songs are different, you know? Are you still going to play the electronica? I think so. I think some of it may be reinterpreted. There are some things that even if from a songwriting perspective now we're not painting with that exact same palette, mm -hmm. there's a way to present it. And it, it all makes sense. It's like a Tarantino fucking movie. Oh, my favorite. You see the beginning, you don't know that the beginning might actually be the end. And it, it, like, it, it's only when it's all done that you go, oh my God, I get all of it, you know? And for us, there's been a journey, but I think there's a way to go back to some of the electronica stuff and present it where it, it makes perfectly good sense in the course of 45 minutes or an hour. You know, it's all about how you, you know, how, how you organize it. I have never, I mean, all the songs I've heard of you guys, not one bad song. And I can't say that with a lot of... Well, we're, we're going to release the shit ones later for you, you know, so... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a hundred percent all kill all killer no filler and um well am... you know the business the business has changed it used to be that like you had a couple singles on your album and then the rest of it was filler and then you know singles actually became a thing and so people weren't willing to spend hard-earned money for prior to digital streaming they weren't going to put up with three decent songs and seven pieces of shit you know and, and in this day and age, it's it's kind of harder, you know, we've, we've struggled trying to decide, like, do you keep releasing singles or do you release an album? And for us, the goal is always to be, there is no filler. It may be different and it may take you to a different place, but it's not like, okay, we had to fill 50 minutes on a CD and we need 30 extra bullshit minutes. You know, yeah. same amount of effort and energy is being put into each one of these things because they have a life. You don't want to have catalog that you just never want to play again because you phoned it in, you know? Well, guys, I am so blessed and uh, grateful to have one little bird in my life. Um, another, you know, way for me to express myself um, and, and to, to reflect on my own life. So I want to say thank you for that. I also want to say thank you for your guys' time. Um, Likewise. And, and we're going to write a killer review for you guys, and uh, we're going to put you in the magazine. Um, Kyle, are you in Ventura County? Yeah, I'm in Oak Park, which is like in Agora Hills. Oh, no shit. My parents live, or my mother-in-law lives in Agora. Oh, really? So, yeah, it, next time I'm down there and I have magazines, I'll hit you up, and then I'll, I'll drop them off for you. Oh, yeah, dude, 100%. This is, like my, this is like my hood. Like, I grew up here. This is like, these are like my formative years. And I kind of left the nest and was in the city for 20 years or whatever and slowly yeah. found, my, found my way back. And it was just like, to me, it was always like, you know, like my publishing company is, is called Oak Park Magic. Like there was something about coming back to this area that like brought music back into my life in a big way. And now it's like, <laughs> you know, it's not things you really think you're going to do, you know, at this age. It's usually like when you're 19, 20, you're going to go be in a band. I decided to do it, you know, sort of on the... <laughs> Yeah, you know, that weather was ridiculous last weekend, right? Two weekends ago, last weekend. Yeah, yeah. one hundred seventeen or whatever it ended up being. Yeah, it was like it was mental. I'll, I will say though, then obviously we've had all the smoke from the fires, and then oh my god, that's horrible. Yesterday, too. I saw the sun for like a minute. I was like a tree with a branch, just like striped yeah. the light. Just like, <laughs> Give me some. Me. Yeah, but uh, yeah, dude, we'd love to connect. You know, you you've got a. Uh, you can just email me like Kyle at East of June music.com. You can hit me up anytime and you know, All right. we'd, love, we'd love to sync up. Well, thank you guys so much for everything. We appreciate it. And um, you. good luck. Good luck with everything. I, I, I thank you so much for everything. And all right. Appreciate it, Tim. Be well. All right, Dirk. Have a good one. Better guys. Bye, Kyle. Bye Emily. <laughs>